there are 49 days between the beginning uh, the, of Pesach and the giving of the Torah. And this is days of preparation for receiving the Torah. And we count the, there's a special uh, uh, mitzvah to count the, the Omer. And every day we have in mind to refine a, another emotion. Meaning to say that, that there are seven emotions and each emotion itself consists of seven. So when we practice, you know, most people only have like a few modes of dealing with, with uh, conflict and dealing with situations. And we really have 49 possibilities. So if a person practices all the possibilities, then they have a wider range to choose from. And so they can choose the appropriate behavior for the appropriate situation. So these, what we actually practice is what we call compound emotions. Second. Yeah. So the way compound emotions work is that there's one emotion, there's a behavior, and then there's an intent of an end state. So in other words, we have a certain behavior and there's the intent of an end state. So there are seven weeks and each of them have one theme, one theme, one theme of an end state. And every day there's a different behavior in order to achieve the same end state. So what we've noticed, or some people have noticed, that there is a calendar that was written by the Lubavitcher Rebbe. It was written in 1943. And each day, it has a little saying, a little lesson of the day. So what we've noticed is that the lesson of the day fits the emotion that we're trying to rectify, that we're trying to practice. So I wish I could share, let's see, am I allowed to share the screen? So I hope you can see this share. I hope you can see the screen. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, so this is from Wednesday. And let's read it. This was not, not today. This was not really this is not really wednesday this was it it works out the calendar works out differently it was the 30th of of nisan and the hayyamim says like this the emotion which corresponds to this even though the rebbe doesn't write the emotion the emotion that corresponds to this is chesed shabbatiferis now chesed is an idea of of kindness and tiferis is harmony and beauty so the action would be an action of kindness in order to achieve an end state of harmony and beauty of multiple things um, in balance with each other so this is what he writes the following fabregans and fabregan is a gathering where people come together and strengthen each other should take place in shul the Fabregan of Suda Shlishit, which is when people come together towards the end of the Sabbath, Saturday afternoon, Shabbos afternoon, of Shabbos Mavarchim is um, after synagogue on Shabbos, there is always a celebration uh, when we bless the new moon every month. That's once in four weeks. And of the holidays such as Rosh Chodesh and festival days of Anash, they should take place in shul. The Fabregan and Malava Malka, that means after Sabbath, should be held in private homes of Anash. Anash is our, um, you know, the people, the, the people of friends. So a Fabregan, when people come together and bless each other, that's the idea of kindness. And the idea of using the synagogue and using the homes as gathering places is idea of harmony and a balance of many parts. Okay, so let's go to see 
So what's the lesson over here that we should make gatherings and we should make gatherings um, for the purpose of creating harmony in various places. Now let's look at the next day. The next day would be Gvura of, of Tiferes. So Gvura is the idea of focus, of being strict. And Tiferes is the idea of being calm. Let's see if we see that theme over here. And if we're breaking during the days of Sphira at some time between the years of 5651 and uh, 5653, some, someone said to my father, the Alter Rebbe's Hasidim were, all, uh, were always keeping count. My father took a great liking to the saying, and he commented, the, that idea characterizes man's avoda. The hours must be, count, must be counted, hours. And then the days will be counted days. When a day passes, one should know what he has accomplished and what remains yet to be done. In general, one should always uh, see it that tomorrow should be much better than uh, than today. And in 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 the Yiddish, he says Shena, more beautiful. So Tiferes is the idea of beautiful and counting. Idea of time management is the idea of of Gvura. So we see that our attitude of time management shouldn't be that it's a burden. It should be a happiness of beauty. That even though time management and, and counting time is something that is, um, it takes uh, inner strength, nevertheless, it shouldn't be a burden. It should be with the intent to create beauty and balance. Next one. So the next one would be beauty of beauty. My grandfather, the Rebbe Marash, was born on this day, 5593, when he was seven years old. He once, or he was once tested in his studies by his father, the Semach Tzedek, my grandfather. He did so well in the test that his teacher was enormously impressed. Unable to restrain himself, he said to the Semach Tzedek, well, what do you say? Hasn't he done marvelous, marvelously? Tamach Tzedek responded, what is there to be surprised uh, about when Tiferes, within Tiferes does well? So what's the lesson from here? So obviously this, there's the idea of beauty of studying Torah, especially when we study the Chumash, that's Tiferes, but, but then studying it in style, knowing your stuff really well, and that will be beauty of beauty. Next one. Netzach is winning. In order for the sake of beauty, it says one should not drink water before Abdullah. Well, even that is a theme of of sorry, even that is a theme of of um of winning. You know, Abdullah is is um said before at the conclusion of the Sabbath. So the fact that a person is doing the holding back from drinking water, there's, there's an idea of, of winning over there. But over here we see even more, winning for the purpose of beauty. It is possible to utilize the God service according to the Torah and all behavior traits. This includes those traits that are unwholesome and even those that are evil as their names and descriptions indicate. For example, the Tzaddik Reb Mushlam Zhusha of Anipali of Blessed Memory learned a number of methods of service of God from a thief. He works quietly without knowing, without others knowing. He's ready to place himself in danger. The smallest detail is of great importance to him. He labors with great toil, toil a clarity. He's confident and optimistic. And he, uh, if he did not succeed for the first time, he tries again and again. So we see that there's this idea of winning. He wants to be winning, yet we're using this to serve God for beauty. And that's 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 Netzach Shabbat Tiferes. Let's go to the next one. Hoid is 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 um is gratitude, and it's also a majesty. Um, but the but Tiferes would be a balance. So let's see. This is Hoid. Can we do we see a majesty, gratitude and majesty for the purpose of balance? So it says, it's a custom not to shave or cut a baby's hair until his third birthday. The third, the third uh, haircutting or optionish of a baby boy 
is a Jewish custom of great importance. The essence of the custom is the educational act of leaving uncut uh, payot, side locks. Um, from the day of the hair cutting and leaving the payot, it is a custom to, to take particular care in customizing the little boy to wear a talit katan to recite early morning brachot, the, the grace after meals, birchat amazon, and the bedtime shema. So we see there's this as, aspect of gratitude. He's doing the daily brachot. He's doing some great, uh, some of the grace after meals, um, some prayer. But you also see there's a there's a harmony of of beauty over here, with with all of this. So so he's also dressing in a in um, Jewish pride, right? That's hoid. Hoid would be Jewish pride. So there's wearing the peyot. Um, wearing the talis katan, saying Shema Yisrael, saying the blessings. This is hoid, Jewish pride. This is majesty. Uh, but it's a balance of a bunch of things. It's not just one thing. So it's the idea of Tiferes. Let's go to yesterday's. Yesterday's is the Alter Rebbe. So yesterday would be Yesaid, which is attachment for the purpose of Tiferous beauty. So the altar Rebbe received the following teaching from the Tzaddik Rebbe Mordechai, who heard it from the Baal Shem Tov, a soul may descend to the world and live 70 or 80 years in order to do a Jew a material favor and certainly a spiritual one. So a person's mission in the world, a person can come for 70, 80 years for the purpose of doing somebody a favor. So you saw this idea of attaching to other people, having attachment with other people, doing a favor for another person, it's you saw it. And, but we see that there's a harmony of a person's entire life. All the beauty of a person's life is connected to this, to this, this one favor. So it's the act of, of your side, of a, connecting to another person to do them a good deed. And yet it puts meaning, brings meaning into a person's entire life. The harmony of a person's entire life, which is Tiferes. And now we go to today's Hayyamim that we just had. The last one. Our, our sages said one should not take leave of his friend other than with a parting of the of of words of uh, of uh, Torah Lord Var Halacha. So Tiferes uh, Malchus. So Malchus of Tiferes Malchus is the idea of speech, um, dibur, and the purpose of the speech is to create beauty. So let's see. So he's saying at Var Halacha a word when a person leaves. And says bye to his friend. He should say I, I, a law. Our forefathers are saint, uh, and the saintly rabbis explained the parting word should be in kind, in the kind of a Torah teaching that transforms the listener into a mahalach, a progress, a person that progresses. Hiloch means to rise from level to level with one ascent after another. Such progression embodies the superiority of human souls over angels, for this ascent is greater, uh, is greatest through an act of goodness extending a favor to another, a material favor in general, a spiritual favor in particular. So basically, we should say words of halacha that makes this beautiful progression that a person works from one moves, and it's going to be doing material favors and spiritual favors for other people. So that's the tiferes. So he's not just learning halacha. There's a balance over here of halacha and good deeds, which is the idea of tiferes. But what, what it's done through is through Dibur and through words. So for that, I'm just going to I'm going to stop the share. And th th that was Rabbi Smith. Um, what is your comments on, on this? Because I just went through this week and I'm, I'm suggesting go through the Hayyam Yams in, in, in Chabad.org and see if you can you can see the rules, which you just learned in the last seven days. The next one is Netzach, which is idea of winning, win, win, victory. And let's see if you can. Notice the seven middays next week, uh, starting from tonight, uh, in in the in the middle of Netzach. Well, the only thing I have to say is that's incredible what you did. I I never even occurred to me to see it that way. So, I have to be honest. So you really opened my eyes to see this beautiful explanation of harmony is being reflected by the choices of the previous Lubavitch Rebbe's 
writings that the Rebbe chose to place these snippets in this particular order in this particular week, particularly in relation to the sphere of the week. So that shows us how intentional we have to be in um, in in focusing on the message of the day, the work of the day. It's really work of the day. And I just wanted to, one other thing that occurred to me when you started this was that earlier we were talking about uh, the general principles of, of working on our, not not being afraid of having certainty that God Almighty is taking care of us. So what Svira Sa'imer is doing is it's really breaking it down into the 49 elements of the type of ways in which we can either go off track in our character, in our character traits, in our emotional experience and take us a misdirect our energy. And we're saying to how to lovingly bring ourselves back to and being shown a path, how to bring ourselves lovingly back to bringing each one of these elements, our loving kindness, our discipline, um, the harmony, the, the compassion and harmony, um, endurance, that internal endurance against inter, uh, and internal obstacles, the external endurance, the splendor, and the foundation, creating a solid foundation for our lives, bringing then ourselves at that point, then we're able to express ourselves to others. All that has to be in place correctly, not to perfection necessarily, but definitely in a way of progression, of, of being in the going in the right direction. I, we want to reach perfection, but that's not what we have to be first at in order to express ourselves to others, but to make sure that everything that we are expressing to others is properly reflecting the, the nature of who we really are. That's really what it's saying. Sphere Sa'imer is saying, when you express yourself in the world, express yourself reflecting who you really are, which is that you've been created by God Almighty in his image for the purpose of bringing greater and greater awareness of God Almighty in this world. So we have 49 days to pull all those loose pieces together to guide them correctly and well and solidly and consistently in the direction of living up to who we are created to be. Rabbi Smith, I just give one. I just want to give one more because um, it's 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 a little bit difficult um, to get the next one, and I think it's important. Um, the next one is just to start off. This is tonight. Uh, it starts tonight when kindness that wins. In other words, we're trying to use. A kindness that's going to be a winning kindness instead of being a destructive kindness. Now, so so we're going to see when one enwraps himself in a talit gadol, uh, that, that, so the white prayer shawl, large talit, it is unnecessary to cover his head and face down to the mouth. This is indicated in the laws of tzitzit in the Sudr. It is a custom, however, to cover the eyes with the upper part of the talit. So you put it over the eyes, but not you don't have to go all the way to the mouth. You cover the eyes. And now, during the days of the sphere, it is customary to study a tractate soto one page each day in addition to one's regular uh, study session. So, so kindness can go the wrong way. You know, it says that the way we wrap ourselves in a talit show across our face is called the atifas yishmelim, the yish yishmalite um, wrapping. Now, why do we wrap? Every morning we do a mitzvah with the Ishmaelite wrapping. So Ishmael was the idea of Chesed the Klippa, of uh, maybe kindness that, that you know, is, 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 is a proud kindness, but not necessarily is it is it fixed up yet. And how do you make sure the kindness in relationships with other people, um, and we're speaking about Inappropriate relationships is a kindness which is inappropriate. How do you how do you stop that from happening? So Ishmael already, you know, he has a system for that. And they have these, he says it's necessary to cover the eyes, cover the eyes. When you wrap yourself like Ishmael, you cover the eyes. Watch your eyes, because then your kindness is not going to be misguided. It's going to be a winning kindness and not a losing kindness. A kindness that builds and not a kindness that destroys. So don't look at inappropriate things. Cover it with the talus, cover your eyes. And then he continues, during the days of the sphere, it's a customary to study the tractate Sota, a one-page day. It's, this is a person that, that their kindness was misguided. Um, 
it, it, their, their kindness is is misguided. It went the the wrong direction because she is um, they, they're suspecting her of being kind to the wrong, wrong person as opposed to her husband. So the reason why we try to study Sota is that it stops that thing from happening. In other words, it brings a certain a morality into the home. And then from the husband, it, it, it goes to the wife that there should be a certain state of morality that infidelity shouldn't happen, that the kindness should be a, a winning kindness and not a destructive kindness, which is going to destroy homes and families. So how do we make a winning kindness? So there's two lessons over here. Um, make sure the talit covers the eyes when you wrap, like the Ishmaelites, and they have they have a system. You see, they 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 wrap they wrap their women up. You know, they they're very strong with that because they realize that it's destructive their kindness, and they can't have a society unless they have a certain aspect of modesty. Um, maybe they have a different understanding of modesty, but yet they have the foundation that that it, it, it's going to be destructive unless steps are taken. So the talit has to cover the eyes. The second thing is you have to learn. It's not enough to cover your eyes. You actually have to study. And it's not enough just not we're not just studying anything. We're studying the actual track date that 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 we learn the implications and the impact of misguided kindness, infidelity, what type of destruction that would case, and that would not be a winning kindness. Study Sota, study Torah, but study specifically the Sota. When do we study in the summer months when there's more of a risk in the summer of these things happening? We actually preempt before the summer actually happens we actually preempt preempted by studying the right things in our minds and protecting our eyes so then our kindness that it's, a, it's kindness that's going to be that's going to be actually strengthening winning it's going to it's going to strengthen the middle of netach that we're going to have winning communities and winning winning situations okay that's my that's my point i just wanted to bring it up for, night, for tonight's fair amazing rabbi here comments to will continue next week and thank you so much for opening our eyes to this and this will open our hearts to better be who we're meant to be god bless you all have a good shabbos and we'll continue next week shabbos shabbos